All right, welcome back to Our Tack and Daughters. And we got a bigger revolver this time. It is also top break, and it is kind of hard to get open. And you'll notice that there's a little slide, or a little button on the side here. Right here. So, first off, this is a Spanish copy of a Smith & Wesson top break. It is in 38 Smith & Wesson. Uh, we've done a video about that. There's a little a bore in there. Got some crud in it. Uh, it is a... Let's see if I can get it open this time. God, these things are tough. Oh, okay. Alright, so I popped it up. You gotta use you gotta use your hand. It is a five-shot revolver. If I get the camera here. It does typical eject. Let's see if we do it here again. There you go. Um... This gun has definitely been used and abused. It's made uh, by one of the Spanish companies. I cannot pronounce it. I will have their name in the title and on the thumbnail. Um, it's made in the Bastille region of Spain where they like to make guns, an un unlicensed copy. Um, it does have a little wiggle here in the front. In this, I don't know if you can see that right here. Let's see. See it? See how much wiggle it is? Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. It's got in there. Now, that's because that expanded out over the years. And that's the little latch right there that allows it. You see how it catches right there? That's what's the ejector. So, um, there's a possibility I could get a shim and put a shim in there to tighten it up. And that would probably help with the lockup a little bit better. Uh, it is definitely tight right here where it grabs on. Oh, what about knocked everything over? This is definitely tight here. Um, I've tried to lubricate it. This might be one of those deals where there's some dirt and grime in there. Um, because this gun is like in 80, 80 years old. And I need to take that, the rear sight and the catch off there and clean it out. But it locks up tight, which is always good for these top brake revolvers. Um, this one does have, uh, some of its bluing left. It's almost a brown color now. It's got that nice patina that some people like. It's got a good set of uh, wooden grips on it, actually. Um, I say, there's their little emblem there. That's their emblem on both there. On the uh, grips on both sides and their emblem right there. Usually have a serial number right here. This gun here, again, you can find these anywhere from $50 to $150 and upwards, depending on um, condition in this next one. I think I got 60 bucks into this one. Um, I have shot this. Um, it does work on single and double action. I just showed you a little trick there. It is unloaded as we checked. So it does have a firing pin on the hammer. This is probably made in the 20s or the 30s. Most likely the 1920s before the um, Civil War there in, in Spain. Um, it's got a little play. But I actually measured it and it is... It seems like a lot, but on both sides of it, I measured it, it's, it still clears the bullet either way. So it's still safe to shoot, which is a good thing because I like to shoot all my guns. Um, this is like a little bit bigger than a four inch barrel on this. The other one's been a three and a, maybe a two and a half, but because uh, I forgot to measure those. But I'll do a comparison here in a minute. But this is in 38, so you got the 38 Smith and Wesson. Not special, but but you know, refer to my video on 38 and 38 Smith and Wesson. This actually has a safety on it, a revolver with a safety. Imagine that. So anyway, we'll take it here. We'll do a, we'll do a little a single action pull here, and it is probably about five to six pounds. No big deal here. So here we go. This is the safety lever right there so you push it down as you see it went down that's up that's down with the thumb safety and then it is locked you cannot fire it push it up and they're ready to go now we go on a double double action mode here it's pretty good it does spring uh spin free um it, it's you got to be careful with these old Spanish revolvers. Um, you never know about the steel quality. And they were not really high quality. But that's why those Spanish ruby pistols were so thick. 
because of the Spanish steel. Um, again, I've shot this. It's uh, I don't shoot it every day. This is one of those guns I might take out and shoot once a year. Maybe put 10 rounds down range with it and put it back, clean it, put it back up. Because it's, at this point, it's a irreplaceable piece of history. Uh, of course, these were probably imported into the U.S. in the 50s, 60s, and um, from, uh, from Spain, of course. Um, this one right here, I'm pretty sure it was made in the 20s. It has several serial numbers on it. So um, there's serial numbers on this side, and then there's even serial numbers uh, right here on the inside of the trigger guard, which I've never seen serial numbers like that. So, in saying that, just another neat little revolver. Um, break over action. I would not carry this because of, uh, you know, it's got a little bit of a one of the little pocket pistol guns. Well, not really a little pocket pistol, but it's probably about the medium sized pocket pistol. Um, this is roughly the same size as a, as a Glock 43, realistically. Um, doesn't protrude down as much, but it is lengthwise about the same. Weighs about the same. Um, shoots a definitely weaker cartridge versus 9mm. So here we're going to compare it against the 32 h and R version here, as you can see, I think. Uh, we've got longer barrel length. Uh, this gun is about as thick as the 32. Actually, the grips on the 32 are a little bit bigger. Cylinders and all this. Of course, this right here was also uh, you can also buy these old H and R's and 38 Smith and Wesson as well in this model, so that's probably why it was beefed up a little bit. But if we can compare this 38 Smith and Wesson copy uh, to the uh, 32 Ivory Johnson, and then uh, you know now we're comparing apples and oranges here on size and all that deal. But yep, uh, I really do like these old uh, top break uh, models, uh, like the. Uh, Russian 44 and uh, the Smith & Wesson number 3's. Um, I kind of like those weapons. I don't have one of those. But anyway, quick little view on this little Spanish pistol here. Um, this will go with my Spanish rifle series. The Spanish were known to copy everything from the baby browning to the 1900 to the Spanish ruby, which is basically a 1900 uh, FN copy. Of John Browning's design they copied Smith and Wesson's 1911 so anytime when you get into Spanish pistols um, like Star, Astria and uh, Alamo of course um, then you get in these older companies that were forerunners of them um, and I can't pronounce this one I don't speak Spanish so um, I can't pronounce it whatsoever my can my Kentuckyism gets to me there so um, anyway just thought I'd show this one out here on our top break specials. And this is the last top break um, pistol I have in my collection. And definitely fun to shoot. Uh, I do prefer the, believe it or not, this is because so, it's so tough to get open. And I need to get in there and clean it out when I get time. But I prefer my H&R uh, Cadet model. Um to this it's not as fast to reload as this one is but it's just I don't know I do like this it's just I just don't like the the catch and the wobble in it so if we didn't have so much of a, needing a slant a shim or to tighten up the front uh, clasp here a little bit more because there is a pin there and it has a screw right here so it could be possible to tighten it up and tighten it up or um, put a shim in there I think uh, be better off to put a shim in there if I can find one small enough versus trying to bend it back because it is kind of a it's not a real real hardened steel it is semi hardened steel I guess I don't know the correct uh, the, the correct uh, metal urgy uh, terminology to use I do have a friend who's a machinist so he could make me a shim small enough once we figure out the die you know how thick we need one so anyway just a smart, fun little gun. First one I ever, first revolver I've ever seen with a safety. So I couldn't let this one go by for the price I got into it. 
So a uh, little fun pocket pistol again. Um, this pocket pill pistol uh, pocket pistol series say that three times real fast has been real fun. I've released released them. This is the last one of the last three days. I've released them. I've recorded them all in all together, but you know I've released them on different dates so everybody get a chance to watch them before I pile them all all in there at one time. So remember, like, share, subscribe to the page. Check us out on our other social media um, pages, and remember, hold. Uh, Republicans accountable when we vote for them. Um, the Democratic Party is definitely destroyed with leftism, communist, socialist type ideas. Hopefully after this election, Mr. Trump will win again and maybe the Democrats will come to their senses. Most likely not. We'll probably have another fight in 2024. Um, another thing too, if Trump wins and the, and the House is still controlled by Democrats, I think we'll see him get impeached over the post office. I guarantee it. Hopefully I'm wrong on that one, but if it does happen, I called it first. So uh, anyway, remember to like, share, subscribe to the page. That helps us out. Thumbs up, as always. If you got one of these old 38 Smith & Wesson, uh, the real Smith & Wesson 38 top break, let me know. Let me see. A, show me a picture on it on social media so I can see it and see how how well that the Spanish copied it. Um, if you got one of these Spanish revolvers like this, let me know about it. Um, if you can pronounce the name to me better than I can, let me know too. So um, I can like to work on that. Um, if you like the 38 Smith & Wesson cartridge, let me know about that too. Anyway, uh, that brings us to the end of this video. And I just want to say, as always, as I close my videos out, remember folks, it costs nothing to be kind to one another. And in this day and age... We need a lot more kindness, and we'll catch you guys next, and gals next time.